Jesus' first words to the disciples are, Peace be with you. It is the wish of peace for them in the context of the turmoil, the fear, the hostility that has been part of their experience over these days in Jerusalem. Jesus' response then is to their fear, to their perception, their uncertainty as to whether it's really him or whether he is a ghost. Now, a ghost was, in the ancient world, a spirit, usually malevolent. And so there was good reason to be afraid of disembodied spirits in the ancient world because they were usually out to do harm to whoever they encountered. That's a consistent motif in ancient literature is that uh, disembodied spirits are something to be afraid of. Their fear and doubts then are responded to directly by Jesus. My sense is that there is on the one hand a sense of calm, but also that Jesus is kind of happily amused at the response of the disciples. So why? Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise? These are words that are, on the one hand, words of surprise, also of a certain degree of calm and amusement at their fear. It is also words of love, of understanding. The memories of the crucifixion are evoked by his telling them to look at my hands and my feet. What are they going to see? Well, they're going to see the marks of the nails in his hands and in his feet. So the memories of the crucifixion then are brought back in these words, but they're brought back now in the context of Jesus being present with them. And so it's a sign of joy. It's a sign of his identity. It is also confirmed that this is not a disembodied spirit when he eats a piece of fish. This is a body. This is a person who has now been resurrected. The tone of Jesus' speech, then, is the most important thing to work on in the telling of this story. It's a tone of joy, of understanding, of compassion, of good humor. Jesus' words to them after they calm down and are able to hear him are words of fulfillment. Words of fulfillment of what was spoken and of what was written. The words that he spoke to them while he was with them, that is, that everything written about me in the law of the Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So it is all focused on what was written in the scriptures. There is also implicit in this focus on writing at the end of the gospel that it is both about the scriptures that were written in the past and the scriptures that are being written by the composition of the gospel itself. So where is it written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations? Well, it's written in the Gospel of Luke. It's written in this Gospel. And it is there that the words of Jesus have been written. So the Gospel itself is then set in continuity with the Scriptures of the past. And the whole role of writing is defined in relation to this fulfillment of the will of God in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the Messiah. The final words of this part of the story are, you are witnesses. You have seen it. You have experienced it. You know the witnesses are both the disciples to whom Jesus is speaking and they are also the disciples who are being spoken to in the telling of the story itself. So these are words that are addressed to the audience as the disciples. And so that happened then, 
And it happens now in the telling of the story that those who are being addressed are those who are the witnesses of these things. They are the witnesses of the story and of the experience that is present in the hearing and participation in the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And what is that good news? Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with the world. Peace be present now as then. That is at the core of the good news of the gospel.